mighty and enigmatic Wansdyke. Not the Wansdyke, just Wansdyke, okay? Antiquarians of old could get a bit idiotic and some of them believe this was a prehistoric structure, but it is now generally accepted that it isn't. Here at Morgan's Hill, the way that the Roman road interacts with it is one of the uh, examples of how it clearly was built after the Roman occupation. More on that later. Flowerfully named antiquarians such as Pitts Rivers and uh, Sir Richard Colt Hoare uh, did a lot of work here that showed that this is not prehistoric. But more importantly, is flowerfully an adjective? In reality, its origins remain a mystery, as do its ends. And that's what we've come to have a look to today, the ends of Wansdyke. Well, one end at least, we haven't got the budget for both. But uh, before we do that, uh, here's a quick summary of the current theories about the origins of Wansdyke uh, for YouTube attention spans. Two popular theories at the moment, and there are many, have recently been put forward by Alan Soldat in a pretty good book recommended by Tweedy Outdoors. The first of his scenarios is that it is a Romano-Britain versus Romano-Britain defensive structure constructed sometime between 367 AD and 450 AD. There's going to be some pretty outrageous uh, pronunciation in this video. Under theory one, the idea is that the that Wansdyke, not the Wansdyke, Wansdyke was built to separate two warring factions of Romano Britons, the Belgi to the south, the Duboni to the north. So these were Romano Britons uh, having to look after themselves. Things are getting a bit feisty. The Roman army has gone. Oh Lord, did I say Duboni? So the Arguments for this are things like the construction of Wansdyke, which is similar to the first iterations of the Antonine Wall and uh, Hadrian's Wall, and then all the signs of insecurity during that period, the Barbarian Conspiracy of 367, the refortification of Cunetio, and just the sheer quantity of villa fires that have been found in this area. Soldat's second theory is that it was a Wessex versus Mercian thing, again defensive barrier, erected sometime between 660 to 800 AD, that's some margin of error, but he favours the reigns of King Sinewolf for the Wessex side and Offa on the Mercian side, two long-running powerful Saxon kings, and he, I don't quite know what he bases this on, but he speculates really that Sinewolf built it, having made great promises to the Witan uh, about building walls in order to uh, get a hold of power. Sound a bit familiar? And then our third origin theory has been put forward by leading YouTube antiquarian Allotment Fox. He doesn't think that Wansdyke is defensive at all. He thinks it, that it is marking estate boundaries, probably dating to a sub-Roman period, although maybe built on top of uh, earlier Iron Age estate lines. I better have got that right or he'll be furious with me in the comments. Antiquarians can be guilty of joining dots and possibly in the arguments about Wansdyke being defensive we can see that in play. There's some fairly serious breaches in Wansdyke that would make its viability as a defensive structure questionable, although there are arguments that, that the threat passed and it was never actually needed. Under scenario one, Romano-Britain versus Romano-Britain, the current consensus ending for Wansdyke, which is at new buildings just to the west of Savanac Forest, makes sense because that's where they butted up, the Belgi butted up to the territory of the Atrobates. And we can definitely see dot joining going on with all of the arguments about where Wansdyke ends. So we're going to be looking at the eastern end and the conjectural route of Wansdyke beyond new buildings. 
Right, we need to step things up a gear. Well, that's just something that YouTubers do when they're concerned their content is flagging. It's meant to create a sort of sense of urgency, uh, a sort of a false jeopardy. This is Chisbury Chapel, built into the ramparts of an Iron Age hill fort, and we are quite a long way east now from the consensus end of Wandsdyke, the other side of Savernac Forest. And we've come here because the proponents of an eastern extension of Wandsdyke uh, have linked the new building's end up to Chisbury Hillfort and then running off down that way via Bedwin Dykes. And ideas of an eastern extension of Wandsdyke go back to the days when antiquarians quite often wore dog collars as opposed to the sort of trendy tweed that most of us adopt nowadays. People like Reverend Collinson in 1792, who proposed that it went to Andover. Our good friend Colt Hoare thought that idea was preposterous, but he did believe in an eastern extension and he had it running to ink pen. Colt Hoare picked up sections of ditches uh, coming through Savanac Forest up here to Chisbury Iron Age Hill Fort and then down via Bedouin Dykes uh, across to Shelbourne over via Jeffro Tolls Farm and then eventually hitting the escarpment at Inkpen. You should now be looking at some sort of overlay which will show you the route that antiquarians such as Colt Hoare believed uh, marked the eastward onward projection of Wandsdyke. I'll just wait for it to catch up a bit there. This overlay really needs to step things up a gear. There we go. Now, I was going to say that the Ordnance Survey used to mark many of these stretches of uh, ditches as Wandsdyke on the old maps, and you might be looking at some overlays showing that. Uh, but I was really surprised to find that Bing Maps on the internet still shows Old Dyke Lane, our next destination, as Wandsdyke. I mean, you really do have to be careful with the internet. And as I make my way up to Old Dyke Lane, I should have checked before I came out, but I think this trackway that I'm walking up uh, may have been a heropath. Uh, maybe Allotment Fox can help us with that one too. And here it is, Old Dyke Lane, or Oldie Ditcher Lane. This video is turning into a positive banquet for all you ditcherholics out there. On the basis of these banks here, and I'll go and stand up on this one, antiquarians of old have believed this to be a continuation of Wandsdyke. We really need to switch up a gear now. So here at Old Dyke Lane, the last visible stretch of embankment running up to the escarpment at Inkpen Beacon. Let's look at these ideas. The Americans Hostetter and How, Hostetter and How, uh, investigated this idea of an eastern extension for Wandsdyke back in the 1980s, and they concluded that it was wishful thinking. Rishi Sunak. So do you like my American accent then? It's good, isn't it? OGS Crawford looked at this site back in the 1950s and he found no evidence whatsoever for a continuation from these uh, banks here to the foot of the downs. Although things are never simple for antiquarians, are they? Because if you look at this bit of lidar that's uh, over me here, you'll see that there is some form of depression running to the bottom of the hills. Obviously Crawford didn't have lidar in the 1950s. Point three against the eastern continuation is that the Savanac Forest link, the forest is absolutely rammed full of ditches. Many of them are to do with later things like the Great Lodge. Point four, these fragmented sections of ditch are not mentioned in the Anglo-Saxon charters. So for instance, the Little Bedouin Charter of 778 and the Great Bedouin Charter of 968 make no references to Wandsdyke. Whereas on the established Wandsdyke, the charters are all Woden's Ditcher this, Woden's Ditcher that. And I may face a challenge here from Allotment Fox, but I think there's a 9th century charter 
that refers to this old dike lane as Raiden Ditcher, uh, Red Dyke in New Money. So again, no mention then of Woden's Dyke. Illustrating these sorts of ancient structures on video is always a challenge. So I thought if I walked across this shot, it might help to show you the scale of it. There it, there it is. But I think I have to conclude that this, like the other fragments, are not part of Wandsdyke. And that what we have here is antiquarians joining dots as they can be wont to do. Uh, they would make David Icke proud, wouldn't they? If he'd have been alive in those days. What a budget this production has. I'm now at yet another location. I've come up to Coombe Gibbet above Inkpen so we could take a look down at Old Dyke Lane from above. But we have a little bit of a problem. Look at this, a cloud inversion. Well, I know, Paul, I know we need to step things up a gear. The barrow here on the top of Inkpen Beacon, a fine uh, Bronze Age Neolithic barrow, I'm not sure which. I know, well, the difficulty now is actually finding guests who want to be on our podcast. And clearly they used to hang people up for display on the top. And then just over there we have Walbury Hill, a fantastic Iron Age hill fort that we are largely disbarred from, sadly. And it is the highest chalk downland in southern England. Wait a minute. That looks like that WC bloke. Antiquarians of old and antiquarians today, even Bing maps have Wandsdyke running right the way up to the foot of the downs here below me at Coombe Gibbet. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Sorry, mate, are you that WC bloke? WC21 <laughs> UK Productions Limited, yes. Better than no one, I suppose. Um, would you like to be, I'm Headley, would oh, you hi. like to be on the Wessex Ways podcast? Me? Yeah. Yes. Subscribers, definitely, yes. Well, yeah, 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 Is of course. Is that fine? That's do, fine, Do we need yes. to do it now? Yes, we can do it now, yeah. Okay, just bear with me No, a no, no, don't I worry about all that, don't worry about all that. Let's just go, come on. <laughs>